Okay, let's get started. So good afternoon. And again, welcome to the Job Search Basics webinar. Uh, no matter where you are along your career journey, you could be undecided as a first year student or senior about to launch your career. There are strategies and resources that our various career centers are eager to assist you with. And that could be through group sessions or one on one advising. So today's workshop will help you tailor your approach to match your internship, your part-time, and your full-time job preferences by including a few hands-on activities. So whether this is an introduction or a review of your basic search strategies, you'll be ready to keep moving forward on your career journey. So my name is Felicia Parks, and I am the School of Communication Career Advisor in the Main Career Center. It is truly exciting to be part of a team that cares about the success of AU students and alumni. No matter which school that you are currently enrolled in, you can get assistance from a career advisor within COGOD's Office of Career Engagement for those in business, School of International Services Career Center, or the main career center, which is located within the Butler Pavilion. Let's take a closer look at the first graphic I have here. While the second individual can't reach the first rung towards their career, our first go-getter has, has seen success by taking incremental steps. With a quick glimpse of my previous experiences, you may not realize it, but I also took smaller steps throughout my career while keeping my job search basics in mind. I'll briefly walk through our agenda for today. Since the plan is to help you with your next internship or job, some elements within this webinar will include hands-on activities so we can practice. And we'll use the chat for those particular portions. But overall, today's webinar will include a brief look into the employer with various application processes across most majors or disciplines. We'll walk through the, and understand that there are several models who approach the application process, but today we'll explore one of those. I'll provide an overview of the resources that are available to you through the career centers. And finally, have you gauge how you feel about your action plan and whether or not it will work for you. Employers are assessing you throughout the recruiting process. So just take a quick look at this graphic we will give you an indication that employers are interested in learning about your experience and your skills to determine if you're able to perform the job they have available and if it aligns within your career goals. As a candidate, you'll be assessing the employer too. So one of the handouts that will be forwarded to you at the end of our session will include common student experiences and the top eight skills employers look for. In the meantime, every part of your search strategy, whether it's your resume, cover letter, interviewing skills, or mock interviews, will also show you ways that you can outline your qualifications and motivation to fit a particular role. Your search should include gathering and organizing data points to help you develop and deliver these things. So under qualifications, can you do the job, which is sometimes measured by interest exams? What about motivation? Do you wanna do the job? Will you come to work day after day and be excited about it? And this is sometimes measured by how early you get involved with the company. And in cultural fit, do you align with the organization or team? Basically, will your personality align with the team? Now, many students will have some of the same qualifications as you based on their degree, major, GPA, and more, but what would make you stand out? And you would need to know the company's mission and how you can help advance that. So it's not easy to develop one plan that will work in every single situation or every employer. So part of the process will possibly include adjusting or accommodating your steps, depending on the job description. Today, we'll follow a more linear path from assessing to applying for jobs. No matter how you're looking to advance your career, again, we're focusing on jobs and internships, there are basic strategies, resources, and considerations you need for each of these pillars. And the resources and services offered by the career centers will help you assess these skills, strengths, and explore diverse industries and functions, prepare you for the application and the interview process, as well as guide you as to when you're ready to apply for positions. You may be wondering, why don't we jump straight to applying? Well, more often than not, 
It'll be a struggle to demonstrate your strengths and interests without going through these steps. So walking through these will help you understand your motivation and fit so that it's easy for you to relay that information to the employer. Identifying your strengths and skills, which employers will either ask about directly or indirectly, happens most often during interview questions. So completing an assessment will often help you understand your strengths, your weaknesses, know your personality, your preference, and organizational cultural fit, clarify that field or industry, maybe the size of organization, determine if you want to work for a public or private organization, or maybe in the role. It could increase your job satisfaction. It can help you strategize your request while you're building your network. And it also can help you with your interviewing techniques. So let's take a closer look into some of the assessment tools that we use here at AU. And these are more formalized tools that can help you provide an inventory of your skills and interests. So what I'm going to place here in the chat so that you have it is a link to our Career Center uh, self-assessment tools. And these assessments can be used in many settings, such as um, some assessments compare you to others, such as the strong interest inventory. Some assessments measure your personality type and preferences that may change over time, such as the Myers-Briggs. Some recommend involvement with extracurricular activities for career readiness. And often most would give you careers to choose from. So I'm having a little bit of an issue trying to copy this. So I will put this in here one quick second and I'll have it to you. And that way you can click it and save it into your, on your computer that you have. Okay, sorry for the delay there. We also want to take time to pause and reflect on what you've learned throughout the semester, how you may grow through what you've learned in both individual or group assignments. And then using these natural transitions, such as between semesters, to sit back and reflect on your strengths and interests will show you how you've evolved or changed throughout the year and also expand your list of skills. One of the things you could do is consider asking your group members, faculty, even your employer supervisors for recommendations on LinkedIn, because getting these recommendations from others not only builds your brand, but it helps you hear from others how much you shine. Um, some things you might do to reflect, you know, maybe you sit back with a cup of tea and have soft music playing in the background while you write down all the things that make interest um, interesting to you and find the connections that can help you with your career path. Basically, the internships and jobs you want to consider, as you see in this uh, graphic here. This is one from the Wise Wondering Map. But let's do something a little different. We'll think through uh, what career should you actually have by doing a really quick session with BuzzFeed. So we're going to finish this as a, as a group or talk about it as a group, but you'll do this individually. So you have access to that as well. And I'll put that here in the chat so you have that. And then once you get your results, if you don't mind sharing that with us, um, we'll talk through a couple of those. And I'll also will share mine so you have a sense as to what we could do with a really quick uh, self-exploration tool. And when you get to the main screen, it's going to look similar to this. And then you'll scroll down, and I'll bring up this screen here so you can see it. You'll scroll down to where you'll start selecting in here, ready, let's begin. And you'll pick those different areas that make sense for you.
Okay, you all should be just about finishing up. I'll share mine. Um, again, this is just a fun and easy, quick tool just to get our conversation started. Um, visit my results. And I'd like to know what results did you receive when you took this quick BuzzFeed survey? And you can share that in the chat. Okay. And Sophie, how do you feel about the results as CEO? Do you feel like a take charge person? Are you okay with risk taking? And again, this was a quick uh, survey, but do those things seem to align with where you are at this point in your, your studies or your future career? And sometimes, sometimes we question it as well. Like, hmm, I'm not sure why I came out um, as that. I came out as athlete, which I'm not an athlete overall, but I can see why it says the things along that I'm dedicated, I'm a team player, I value loyalty above everything else. And I like to know how things work when everybody works together. So that definitely de defines me. And so thank you, Sophie, for sharing that you, you think that it does apply to you to a certain extent and that you enjoy a healthy work-life balance and you like leading in projects. So great. So think through those particular things because as we go to this next slide, um, we're going to do a post check. Um, so we think through inventory wise or reflection. Do you see yourself leaning toward, I'm going to contact the career center and sign up for one of these self assessments, whether it's the strong, the Myers Briggs, the Strength Finder, or whatever tools that we have? Or do I find myself wanting to self reflect now that you've learned about both of those? So, can you share in the chat real quick? Do you feel that you would do more of an inventory or would you do self reflection? And the link that I had provided to you all earlier, it walks you through the different self-assessment tools. So reflection, okay, fantastic. We're gonna move on to basics of exploring. And this is a safe space, so please feel free to, to pop any questions or comments into the chat as you go along. I have quite a few windows open and I'll definitely do my best to see them all. So have you started exploring diverse industries and functions? Um, some of you may have started exploring already because college is a safe, productive space to engage in a lot of resources, whether it's employers, alumni, and faculty, and they're all eager to patiently guide you through your career choices. Exploring is also a process that helps you learn what you like and what you don't like in a future career. Um, have you ever completed an internship during one semester that you did or didn't like? And has it given you more clarity in choosing your next opportunity? Or have you chose a class and you had hands-on projects and had full, full on experiences and you realized, hmm, this is something I definitely wanna pursue. So overall, you're able to build your brand through exploration. So we'll go into a little bit deeper about the research. There's a more of a formal way of exploring through ONET, and I'll pop that here on the screen. I'll pop it into the chat so that you can have a copy of that link. And with ONET, and we'll look at this a little bit deeper um, as far as some of the tools we'll look up um, once we get to another portion of our session here. So I typically will have students when we work one-on-one, -on -one, whether that's in person or doing Zoom or whatever tool we're using, is pull up a job description that's of interest to them. And I'll actually have them highlight either if it's a printed copy with these sharpies you see here or online, just kind of highlight, hey, if I had these experiences, I use green because green is my favorite color. Or if I feel like, hey, I could get these, but maybe I want to use LinkedIn Learning or other tools, so I'm going to highlight in orange because a little bit of caution. And then these are areas I don't have that so I highlight in pink. So definitely consider thinking through what are some of the hard skills, like technical ones or certain platforms, soft skills, such as like communication, whatever tool you feel like would be important because those career guides by major on our website, the ONET job postings will definitely be of help to you. 
let's also talk about networking because networking plays a huge role. You can connect with peers over here in class talking about certain internships or projects, professors, alumni, and employers to understand what we call the Tierra, trends, insights, advice, resources, and assignments. And there's a lot of power with networking, basically sharing your interests and asking people about their experience. So why not consider developing a targeted list and focus on who you'd like to, spoke to speak to, which is more like your LAMP list, everyone that you feel like you would identify, um, which alumni that would provide insights of what you want to do or not do. And then sit down with those individuals, again, it could be virtual, and ask some of those great questions doing what we call informational interviews. And that document as to how you do that will be in your packet that'll be sent to you after our session today. A third way is thinking through um, engaging, being involved with so many things. I know the pandemic has caused some challenges with us to be involved on campus or to join certain groups, but that's part of our exploration and networking is that it can happen when we join clubs, we do volunteer work, we participate in events, and we're you know, basically engaged with different employers. Again, you can speak to your career advisor if you want to dive a little bit more into these particular things that are listed here on the slide. So we're gonna to explore together. I actually sent you all the ONET link in the chat and I'll put it up here on the screen. And what we will do is that we'll think through um, this particular list of employers because this is a site that's managed by the US Department of Labor. It's free. You don't have to be a student in a particular school, but it's an opportunity for you to see what language is described in various job postings, what qualifications stand out. So I'm gonna go and look under occupations and I'm gonna select industry. And here under industry, I'm then going to kind of click around and I'm going to try to decide some opportunities I think would be important for me. And so under here, I'm going to select, which will be, huh, changed it a little bit since the last time I was in here, there was a whole section that said career. <laughs> so I'll just select arts, recreation and uh, entertainment here and go. And in this particular area, I'll just say that because we are American University, I'll do media and communication workers. And then you can kind of scroll through, you can select it by state, you can put in your zip code. But some of the things that's gonna be important for you are the details, like what are the things that they're looking for in this particular role? And in this one, it's not the best example. So I'm gonna go back here for a second and select something else. Um, let's see. I'll select agent. Because we have a lot of film students that decide they want to get involved um, in the film industry, but not necessarily be on cam on camera. So some of the tasks, it will walk you through that, the technology skills. What's important to you is to take a look at the knowledge and the skills that would be required by that particular employer and some of the abilities you probably should have reflected in your resume, discussed in an interview setting, as well as some of the activities you might do on the job. So this is a better example than the previous one I pulled up. And it will show you what type of degree is typically required. And then if you really want to get um, a little bit more into different roles, it'll show you the sun is that it's a growing field. And you can select it by state. So if I decided I want to take a look at California, because that might be an area that really would appreciate that. I can also see some of the salaries. And I can see that this is a particular area in Los Angeles that's probably a little bit higher than um, some of the other areas like in San Diego, but um, significant in San Francisco. So we'll switch now to doing our post check. So these were three areas that we covered just now. So in the chat, I would love for you to share which one of the paths you'd like to explore. Would you do research? And you can use Handshake as one of those for job postings, or you can pull up keywords within Vault. Those are both resources that are within Handshake in addition to a few others we'll talk about, such as Big Interview. Um, are you thinking about networking? Even if you're shy, we have a guide on how do you network um, in that particular situation, ask people about their experiences. Or do you find yourself kind of engaging with clubs on campus, virtual organizations doing volunteer work, or is there a combination of three? So if you wouldn't mind sharing in the chat, you're gonna focus on research, network, engage, or more than one. And while I'm waiting for that to pop up in the chat, 
one of the things I'll show you within uh, Handshake is ways that you can kind of explore job postings as well. So this is a screen. I'm logged in as a student and I may go under jobs to look for opportunities here. And then I will plug in here a certain job that I'm looking for. My undergrad degree is in public relations and journalism. So I will put in here public relations, and then what I will see when I do a search here is a pretty extensive list of opportunities, 2.8 thousand to be exact, right? So I can use my filters, which you all have probably done before to be an internship. Um, I had a lot of unpaid opportunities when I was an undergrad, so I would wanna click paid roles. And when I look through these descriptions, I can see not only the important things like the dates for the position, the salary, I say a little bit about the description and how do I match these particular skills. And if the employer doesn't have a robust job description to help you figure out what you would be qualified for, go to their website, take a look at the reviews from other people that have looked at this particular employer and also consider engaging with students. And it will show you students that have worked here before. And for example, I can ask Katie um, about their particular experience. And the other 19 students that work there and they don't have to be an American University student. So thank you so much for your response, um, Sophie, about networking and engaging. I'm excited that you picked two areas. Um, sometimes that can seem pretty interesting or a little bit of a challenge to do that. So fantastic you're doing that. All right, we'll go back to the presentation here. So one of the big things about exploration and the basic job search is preparing for what we ultimately we have is an interview, <laughs> okay? So when you're thinking about the job search process, you assess your skill, you've decided that you're going to apply, you wanna start practicing your interviewing beforehand because luck will have it, you apply for the job and they'll immediately want to interview. And you thinking, I haven't had an opportunity with my career advisor to practice. So we'll talk through ways that you can prepare so that you're kind of doing these all together. Um, so one thing I'm going to select is this particular method we use most often called STAR. So you get these typical interview questions like tell me about a difficult time or a difficult person, um, which is more behavioral, or you have those open-ended questions like what would be your greatest weakness? A great way to respond to either of those is the STAR uh, format. So walking people through the situation, tasks, results, action steps, and results. And so we definitely want to tell a story that helps. So we give them a sense as to my past behavior and how does it work out with my, my future behavior? Would I have that same type of experience? So I'm going to pull up in this particular instance, the job posting that we saw already here. And in this particular position, they were looking for someone who could assist with public relations activities involving writing, research, social media, as well as administrative duties. One of the questions could be, can you give me an example of a project that you've worked with that you're proud of that involves some research and social media? How did you engage your audience and what did those numbers look like? So that seems like a really lengthy question, which I always encourage people to ask the employer to, re to repeat it and to also take notes so that you can take a look at it. It shows that you really care about the next steps. So that'd be important as well. All right, so on that, this is just a quick screenshot of the actual position I had talked about earlier that they switched out um, under the career technical education, teachers post-secondary. It's a little bit about the career advisor role that I have, and we looked at a particular role, so we're okay with moving forward here. And then we're gonna to kind to draft what's an elevator pitch. So if you haven't heard of that before, that's an opportunity for you to kind of say to someone, here's, how amazing I am by giving myself a description of what I might put on a business card a little bit a little bit longer and also ask questions. So the concept is you pop into the elevator of someone that you admire or organization, you see it on their name tag and you give your pitch, you ask questions. You work on your interview responses, which you can use and we'll talk about this in a second, the big interview. Colgot has a resume tool that will grade the way you use your wording and your um, actual verbs through VMOC, and then also creating that cover letter, which seems to be some of a challenge for, for most of us. 
Another way is to actually practice. So with that big interviewing tool, you have pre-recorded questions. It's not a live person. It will also give you videos as to typical responses. And then if you practice on your own, you can look at your eye contact, listen for your voice reflection, infection, connection, and also send that link to your actual career advisor schedule time to get feedback. So your voice inflection shows whether or not you're engaged, you're excited about the opportunity. And you can do that in the comfort of your, your home, your dorm, whatever it makes sense for you. And then schedule that time with your career advisor. So now that we're at the point of kind of doing a post check, do you find yourself leaning toward, I'm going to draft a list of interview questions. I'm going to explore experiences from different job descriptions I see on Handshake or I sit, see on ONET, or, or am I going to sit down because I'm ready to practice in front of a camera and answer questions with a mock interviewer, or I'm going to meet my career advisor. So do you find yourself leaning toward drafting, practicing, doing a little bit of both? If you could share that in the chat, that would be ideal. And there are so many different ways that you can prepare based on the strategies that we discussed today. Oh, I love how uh, Sophie has an exclamation mark of doing both. The confidence, uh, that's, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. And so as you draft those lists of questions, we also have resources on our website, the Main Career Center website to say, hey, here are a list of information interview questions so you can use these and then you can actually edit it to make it more sense for you. So now we're rounding the bend and thinking about the application, right? So I hope you've seen the value of what we've discussed so far as we touch upon this last pillar. You know, we look at not only the timeline, we look at how do we chart things that make sense and we wanna avoid what looks like up there. Yes, that is a black hole. So let's talk through the timeline. And, you know, I talk to students all the time and I'm like, oh, my roommate had a job offer last fall because they were going into the accounting field. But I am a film student and I don't see any opportunity to open for me yet. And I'm going to be graduating this semester. So one of the things that for you to really know is that when employers hire actually hire people, go through the interview process. It will vary based on industry. It will also vary based on the employer. So one of the things that would be very helpful when you're connecting with people for information interviews is to find out about their recruiting strategies and timelines. And then you want to take that in consideration so that you don't fall into the trap of applying during the off cycle. So some of this information might be uh, gained from Handshake because you'll see deadlines there. Again, some of them could be from information interviews. Sometimes it's a mystery. <laughs> we just kind of apply and, and hope for the best that we'll connect with an employer. And if they're looking to hire someone right away, we can say, hey, I'd love for you to keep me in the pipeline for future opportunities because I'll be available this particular day. So what about that black hole? You know, I, you saw on my slide that I was a former recruiter. So you want to think through what works best for you so you don't feel as though your resume has gone into the great beyond and you want to identify the type of skills, things we talked through already, assess yourself, make sure that you have things that will send out to the employer. And if you're applying outside of Handshake using things like LinkedIn, Indeed, they're all great websites. And sometimes you have to focus on industry websites. So like one of the ones that I use as an SOC advisor is PR Week. So whatever tool that you use, make sure you find ways to try to connect with those employers. Or if you type in the employer's name into LinkedIn Indeed that you find a position, see if we have a connection with them in Handshake or in like our alumni fire. And that way you can find out a little bit more about whether or not they're available for a 15 minute informational chat. And that way you can find more about that timeline we talked about. And then definitely keeping yourself on track because applying for internships, full-time opportunities, part-time jobs can feel like a tedious job, right? So every time you apply online, make sure you copy and paste that description into a Word document and save it. People will always apply for a position weeks later, get a call about the interview, and then when they go to the website, they realize the description has been removed. So save yourself that hair pulling uh, incident, copy and paste it, 
then you can have like a, a Google Drive or something to kind of track which employers you've connected with, the job postings, if you sent a thank you note, if they scheduled an interview. I've even had some students have it color coded and they share it with me during appointments. But tracking helps you keep an idea as to the timeline, how to leverage your network with that employer, and then try to follow up when you haven't heard from them. It's been more than a month or it could be, you know, a really quick turnaround period. It could be two weeks or less. Um, but a lot of times the progress can go, you know, really slow or really fast. I've heard, heard both, but it's really important to do that. And that's why you see that line I have here about the average time for job posting to interview is about 34.6 days. And the average length of time from interview to offer is about 19.9 days. Some employers will have multiple rounds. Some employers will have one. Some will look at the first stack of resumes that come through their website and put together an interview team and schedule days. There's a lot of different ways that you do that. And one of the things that you can definitely do to help you is use some of the tools like Handshake. And Handshake will give you a sense as to like how to apply. So I'm going to pull up the screen real quickly. So you see it again, I'm in Handshake. And let's say I'm going to apply for this position. Once I go and click apply, uh-oh, there we go. <laughs> I thought it was disappearing for me. If you have more than one resume, which I encourage you to do so, because sometimes you change some of the wording in it a little bit because there's a certain course project that stands out more for that position or one of your volunteer opportunity stands out more. You can select which resume you want to send. I don't have any resumes uploaded <laughs> because I'm using my uh, fake student account. And then this particular position requires a cover letter. So this may have you kind of clicking the X, going back, looking at that job posting, writing an amazing cover letter, work with your advisor to critique it and update it. And then sometimes other documents they want could be those writing samples you have from the classroom, right? So you wrote a paper, it was five pages, but hey, we can reduce it down to two or three pages and we'll use the edited version and we went back and forth with our professor, but they want to see two or three writing samples. So you can put it all into one document if they only have one link here and then I can submit my application. So definitely go through and think of ways that you can adjust your searches, even with location. Let's say I only want and I put in a lot of cities here. Let's say that I decided, hey, I want to live in Boston and I'm going to look at these opportunities. So use your filters to your advantage so that you find things that make sense for you. So guess what time it is? It's time for a post check. So how do you think you will apply when you come across that amazing part-time, full-time or internship opportunity? Are you gonna look at the timeline to make sure you understand what the employer is looking for and kind of divide it up based on like, okay, this is a fall, this is spring, this is summer. Are you gonna think through certain job postings that you've seen on Handshake, Indeed, LinkedIn and determine which ones you wanna apply for in the future? Are you gonna track them in an Excel spreadsheet or Google Docs and have someone review your resume and actually your cover letter as well. Sometimes people go for all three. So post check, how will you go about the process of applying for future opportunities? If you could share that in the chat. All three, I love it. Thank you so much for sharing that in the chat. All three is going to be really important and organizing. So now that you've learned so much about all the different pieces of assessing your skills, exploring opportunities, networking opportunities, self-assessments, preparing with the interview process and then the application, what is your action plan? What are you going to do next? Those are some of the things you're going to think through and write out your own action plan and maybe share that with your advisor and say, hey, here's what I think I'm going to do for the next six months or next summer or next fall. Think through your action plan and keep in mind your action plan can change. Your interest could change. And that's great. We definitely encourage you to do that. But some of the final tips I want to share with you, because I want to make sure that throughout this whole process, you have to stay positive. Don't get frustrated. Don't compare yourself to other majors. Don't think through like, oh, no one's going to contact me because they do. I've, I've heard it a million times in the years I've been here with the Career Center. And we just spent the last 30 minutes or so going through ways that we develop incremental steps 
to make sure you accomplish these different tasks and staying on top of those things through your coursework and your volunteer, your engagement on campus. And your sense of humor is going to help you because when you get those stories where you're like, oh, I didn't do so well in the interview, you can learn from it. And in anything that causes any challenges or you experience any roadblocks, their career center advisors are help you, are actually happy to help you navigate through that process. Even you, we have handshake videos to help you update your career interest tab or indicate your profile. And that's a way the employers can find you as well. Um, it's great to have all these different ideas and checklists, but you definitely want to find a way to kind of connect with someone just to have a post check and say, am I on the right track? Most importantly, here's a picture of our team um, since after the pandemic started that will be back on campus um, next week and we'll be excited to see you in person. This is the main career center. And so for the purpose of drop-in advising with our peer advisors, you can go to our website to see the times that we have virtually and in person. For COGOT, they have the peer advisors. Um, SIS also has a different career page for you to log in. So it depends on your major. If you get confused, you can definitely ask questions of anyone in the Career Center. You can shoot me a quick email if you have one, but definitely let me know, you know, ways that we can support you as a Career Center or if I'm the advisor for your school, definitely do that. I would love to open it up for any questions at this, at this point. I'm feel free to answer any questions as well outside of this session um, through my email address as well. But thank you so much for your time and participation. Thank you for being engaged. We want you to be well and safe and have an amazing semester here at American University. You're so welcome. So if there aren't any questions, we will stop recording at this point and we'll also stop sharing. And then this webinar will be available on our YouTube channel if you wanna check that out and you'll also get the handouts that we discussed today. So again, thank you so much for your time and your participation. And I hope you found our basic job search skills webinar very helpful.